Hey y'all, welcome back. My name is Christina, and we have been going through my favorite book of all time, The Baby Whisperer Solves All Your Problems by Tracy Hogg. Today's video is going to be on chapter six, which is I think probably her most popular chapter, definitely her most popular concept. We're gonna be talking about sleep training, specifically Tracy Hogg's pick up, put down sleep training method. This is the chapter that got me hooked on The Baby Whisperer. It's what made me buy this book, and it is the thing that just literally got my life together. <laughs> so essentially, since this is a sleep training method, this is for babies who are four months or older. If you do have any questions about baby sleep from before four months, you can go to this video right here that I just did. It talks about zero to three month old sleep. So. That is the perfect video that you're gonna to wanna to watch before you do start sleep training at four months. We're gonna just talk a little bit about what Pick Up Put Down is, and then we're going to look at how it's adapted for each age range. Essentially, what we talked about in our last video with chapter five, the zero to three month old sleep, we talked a lot about the 4S sleep ritual that Tracy Hogg has, and that is to set the scene, swaddle, sit and then if necessary shush pat and that is what you should do with every baby before they turn four months old i really recommend that before you sleep train if your baby is not four months old yet or will be four months old soon that you try that 4s method before you actually sleep train tracy hogg actually considers this pick up put down method to be a last resort that we should actually be doing the four s's from birth and then Ideally, if we do that perfectly, we won't ever have to sleep train and do pick up put down. But if our baby is four months, then the 4S ritual is still what we're gonna go with, but we're gonna adapt it a little to be pick up put down. If your baby is older than six months, then the 4S ritual with the shush pat will definitely not be age appropriate for them. But we still want to maintain the first three S's of the ritual. So every time we put our baby to sleep, we will set the scene, We'll make it very dark, make it very quiet. If you use white noise or music or something, put that on. Close the curtains, turn off the lights, get everyone else away and out of the room. Then we're going to swaddle. If our baby is not rolling over yet, then a swaddle is so appropriate. Or maybe they're at a point where they have one arm out, both arms out, or they could just be in a sleep sack or sleep blanket. Then number three, we're going to sit. So we're gonna hold our baby with their head here vertically and we're going to sit quietly with them and let them just take some time to rest and to get calm and to get a little drowsy. And then we'll lay them down in their crib. And if you are working with a baby younger than four months, you will do the fourth S, which is shush pat. And that's when you will pat your baby on the back and you will shush out loud in your attempt to calm and soothe them so that they can fall asleep. Now, before we get into how that method is adapted for pick up, put down, there's a couple other things that I would suggest you get in order before you do start sleep training. The first is that you actually need to have your baby on a four hour easy schedule before you sleep train at four months. So this transition from a three hour, eating every three hours at three months old to eating every four hours at four months old should happen sometime between three and four months. If your baby is not on a routine or not on the easy routine, then it might take a little extra work, but I highly recommend you get them onto that four hour routine before you sleep train. I think the four hour routine is the best routine it is the best stage in your child's life so for example if you want to know what that would look like if your baby starts their day at 7 a.m they'll wake up at 7 and their wake window should be about two hours long they'll take their first nap at 9 they'll sleep until 11 where then they'll wake up eat again be awake until 1 sleep until 3 wake up eat again then they'll be awake until 5 then they'll do a quick cat nap until 5.45 at the latest, and then they'll be awake until 7.30 or 8, whenever you have set their bedtime, and then they'll go to bed. You'll do a dream feed as well between 10.30 and 11 at night. This, if you were counting those hours spent asleep during the day, that is 
two two hour chunks of time that your baby will be asleep and you just have free time to yourself to do whatever you want. That's the why and easy. So during this time when I transitioned my daughter to this schedule, it wasn't ideal until she was actually sleep trained. So I got a lot of my time back by moving her onto the schedule and then sleep training her using pick up, put down. So during those four and a half ish hours total during the day that she was taking naps, I could do whatever I wanted. And that is just so much free time and so much time to rest and so much time to just do whatever you need to do, do things that you enjoy to do. So I really recommend you get them on that routine and you do that before you sleep train. It's just gonna make it easier for you when you sleep train. You'll be sleep training for nighttime sleep as well as nap sleep. And these naps are nice and long besides the cat nap so that you can not feel rushed to get your baby down for a quick nap as much. And a lot of parents are wondering when it comes to the beginning of sleep training, should they start with nighttime sleep? Should they start with naps? I think it's really up to you. I personally started with my daughter's nighttime sleep. I knew that the first time doing pick up put down would be the hardest, and it was. The entire first night I did it, I had to wake up several times and help her, but it was the only time that I had to do pick up put down in the middle of when she was supposed to be sleeping, and certainly the only night that I had to do it. I, sh I could have started it with her first nap in the morning, but I didn't want to exhaust myself throughout the day. I would have just preferred to just spend extra time in the evening and then spend the re next day resting. <laughs> That's just my personal preference. So you can do it for whatever you want. Pick up, put down is really good for both naps and nighttime sleep. A common nap issue that you might be having during this time is that your baby is only taking short naps. Those naps might be about 45 minutes in length. That is the length of a baby's sleep cycle. So that makes a lot of sense. So you can use pick up, put down to extend their nap past 45 minutes. So if they do only nap for that short of time, then you'd go in and you would do pick up, put down to extend their nap until when they're supposed to be waking up. So Tracy Hogg says in her book that pick up, put down takes about 20 minutes or so on average to do, though she did see a lot of cases of when it would take an hour or more. I would say don't focus on that length. I think my first night, it probably took me about 40, 45 minutes to put my daughter down for the first time using pick up, put down. And that was after we were using the 4S wind down ritual for about a month beforehand. So she was pretty used to the techniques I was using, but it was the first time that she was actually being taught to sleep on her own. So of course it took a little extra time. I think you should even allow up to two hours for them to fall asleep. I think two hours would be excessive for pick up, put down. But if you're in there watching the clock, you're just going to be less patient and you're gonna have a harder time finding success with the method. Additionally, before you start pick up, put down, just know that your baby will cry. And pick up, put down is not necessarily, it's usually grouped into gentle sleep training, but that is because it doesn't abandon your child. And that is what happens with controlled crying methods. Your child is crying out because they are afraid. And controlled crying can also cause a fear of cribs, a fear of abandonment, a fear of a lot of things. With pick up, put down, your child is never afraid. You are always with them next to them until they fall asleep. If they wake up, it is your job to be there as soon as you can when you know that they need you. So pick up, put down does involve crying. Crying is a part of babies learning how to sleep because while they're learning how to sleep, they're also learning how to self-soothe. And that is something that is such an important skill for them to have, especially as early as four months, that's when they can learn it. So if you can teach them that skill, just know that that is a blessing to both them and you. From my experience doing pick up, put down, when I was in there with my daughter, I was afraid that I might be frustrated by her cry, that it might stress me out, but it was a very different cry from what it would have been if I had just left her in there to figure out how to fall asleep on her own. I really loved that I could be in the room next to her, sitting right beside her, and help her to fall asleep and I could tell that she really appreciated and valued my presence and that while she was crying, she was crying because she wanted to sleep and she didn't know how to do it. And so it was really great so I could use this pick up put down tool to teach her that and slowly and slowly her crying would lessen with every single attempt. Pick up put down is also about instilling trust. So like I mentioned, I was there right next to my daughter. Every time your child is awake, 
in the middle of the night while they're trying to go to bed while they're waking up if you are there with them then they trust you and if you are confident in the method that you are doing then they will have so much trust in you they will not be afraid my daughter has never been afraid of sleeping alone never been afraid of her crib or of her room and I believe that it has largely to do with pick up, put down. I think if I had chosen to do a controlled crying method, then we would have definitely struggled a little bit more with her being alone. But you should know before you start that people don't choose this method because it's actually really hard. It's physically hard. You're picking up and putting down your baby. And it can be emotionally hard as well since you're in there spending so much time working to get them to sleep. But if we're going to be teaching our children a skill that we want them to have for the rest of our lives, then we should expect it to take a little work. The problem with controlled crying is that it takes all of the work away from us and it puts it on our child. We're expecting them to learn something that we're not actively teaching them. We're, as parents, our child's first teachers. So I just loved that there's this concept that I could teach my child how to sleep and that I could be a part of her healthy sleep life. So it is a lot of work, it is a lot of commitment. I think you need to be aware of how big the commitment is before you go into it. That way you can prepare and have the most success. If you don't feel like you can do this method, then do another one. Don't feel bad about whatever you choose. Just be consistent with what you do. Do not try a method and give up on it. You need to fully commit and that will help your child the most. So now we are going to get into it. So like I mentioned before, when your child is between three and four months, you wanna start looking for signs of readiness that they can switch over to a four hour easy routine. If they have not been on the three hour easy routine by three months, then you can actually just go ahead and whatever you're doing, just get them onto the four hour. In her book, there is a whole breakdown of how you can do that in this chapter. I'm not gonna go over it. I did it pretty slowly with my daughter. I wasn't sure if she would be ready or not, but she took it very well. She was only on a three month easy for about three weeks before I switched her onto the four month easy. And she was definitely ready for it and she was able to take it. So once you have your baby on the four month routine, then you can start thinking about when a good time to sleep train is. I suggest just getting as close to four months as possible. There's a lot of changes happening in your baby's brain, especially in their limbic system and with their circadian rhythm developing. A lot of those changes happen at four months. It's not at the exact four month point. You just need to watch your child and see if, if you think that they would be ready. I wanted to be extra sure that it would stick, so I waited until my daughter actually turned four months exactly. And if your child is premature at all, you might need to wait even longer to do this. Also, as a little prep before you do start pick up, put down, you should learn your child's mantra cry. So Tracy Hogg also has a whole section about this that you can read into a little deeper. But a mantra cry is different from an emotional cry. Uh, it's different from a cry where your baby is asking you for something. It's more of your baby just expressing how they feel. So a normal cry will escalate until a baby is helped, but a mantra cry stays steady throughout and it's usually the same sound over and over and over at the same pitch. So if you listen to your baby on a monitor while they are sleeping, you might notice when they're going to bed, uh, while they're waking up or any time in the middle of the night if they might wake up a little bit and put themselves back to sleep, that's usually their mantra cry. So just be aware and try to listen to the sound. I couldn't completely pick out my daughter's mantra cry, but I knew a real cry from a non-real one. So I knew when I needed to go to her and I knew when I didn't have to and when I could wait and that she would settle on her own. And that's more important. Like I said, pick up, put down means you're in there with your child when they're crying, but you don't need to be in there constantly if they're just waking up and making a few noises. Just know the difference so you don't go rushing in when you don't need to. So now whenever you're ready to start sleep training, you can start pick up, put down. Tracy has this section, we'll say it's for four to six month olds, so you can start a little bit before four months if you believe your baby is ready. So like I said before, you go through the 4S ritual and instead of when you get to shush pat, that's when you start the pick up, put down. So your first pick up is going to be the sitting, that third S in the 4S ritual. You can also stand. The key is just to be still. So that's gonna be your first pickup. And you can, during that time, 
start to relax your child and hopefully they don't start crying yet and then instead of doing the shush pat you'll just lay down you'll you'll do the first put down and then you'll just watch and you want to observe them if you've been doing the forest ritual for a while they could get to a point where you can just literally lay them down at the perfect time while they're still drowsy but awake and they'll put themselves to sleep but if not i'm assuming that you haven't been doing that if you're watching this video your baby will start crying so when they start crying what you do is you pick them up again you hold them in the same position as you did before I mentioned in my last video, I would never hold my daughter vertically. I would always hold her horizontally because she did not like to be held like this. And that's okay, just hold them in a way that they like being held, that they can be soothed. And you are supposed to pick up and hold them. Do not move, do not jostle, do not rock, don't do anything. You're just supposed to comfort them by your presence and you can use your voice as well. And then as soon as they stop crying, you lay them down. If they stop crying, you lay them down immediately. You do not hold them any longer. So you're trying to teach them, I'm gonna pick you up to comfort you emotionally, but I'm laying you down because you need to do the work of going to sleep on your own. So it's very important you lay them down immediately as soon as they stop. If your baby does not stop crying, you don't wanna hold them for any more than two to three minutes. And if they're still crying at the two or three minute mark, lay them down while they're crying and then pick them up again and count that as another pick up put down. So the goal here is all this picking up and putting down and crying is going to help them run out of steam. So eventually they'll become more tired and they'll start to focus on their own sleep. And Tracy Hawk suggests that during this time, you use your voice to comfort your child. I never used my voice because my daughter would get more agitated when I talked. So this was something I never did. I would just shush like the shush pat shush and i would try to keep my hand on her as well when she was down in the crib so that she would know i'm there i also additionally would have to kind of shield her eyes a little bit she would get pretty distracted but if i shielded her eyes she would close them and that's how i knew she was close <laughs> additionally the baby whisperer says not to use the shush pat during this time to comfort them I would use the shush pat, but only because I knew it was not a prop for my daughter. So after picking her up and putting her down several times without it, without any motion while moving, while holding her, I would I started to pat her a little bit as well. And I would mostly do this after I've been picking her up and putting her down for so long that my back would hurt. So I would try to, I, if I started shush patting her in my arm, she would almost immediately stop crying. So I would lay her down and continue it. And I would just get her to a point where she was more calm in her crib. And I could see her falling asleep and I would start to slow down the shush pat. I would say only do that if you know your baby will react to it well. The shush pat could become a prop for some babies. So I don't recommend it for a lot of them. I wouldn't say that that is a part of Tracy's actual method, but I do think you can use it. You can certainly use it when you, if your baby is under six months and it does not stimulate them more. The shush pat is also good because it doesn't put your baby to sleep. It just calms them down enough so that they can put themselves to sleep. So that's what I would see with my daughter is that the shush pat wasn't putting her to sleep. She was putting herself to sleep. The shush pat was just getting her to stop crying so that she could actually do that. If you are sleep training your baby and they're closer to six months, they may be more physically able to move around, especially if they're not swaddled anymore. So when you go to pick them up, you don't want to pick them up too quickly. Just make sure that you're not going to get kicked by them. So just wait an adequate amount of time before you know it's actually safe to scoop them up. So that's the gist of the pick up put down. But now as our baby grows older, we're going to have to adapt the method a little bit to be age appropriate for them. So if we're looking at babies between six and eight months, then pick up put down is going to look a little different. At this point in their life, they are probably able to sit up in their crib a little. They might not do it on their own very well, but they may, they're more physically able to resist you. So you don't want to be swooping in and picking them up. You want to turn pick up put down into a partnership. So when it's time for you to pick up your baby, you can hold out your arms like this 
and wait until they hold out their arms for you to pick them up. Then once you pick them up, you will not hold them for any longer. You will literally just pick them up to lay them back down. Likely what will keep happening is they may roll over and start reaching out for you more and you just need to keep doing that same motion where you pick them up and you lay them back down immediately. Also, try not to make eye contact and definitely don't try to cuddle them or rock them while you pick them up. Don't do anything. Tracy mentions that she's pretty short so she would always have a stool next to the crib if it was a really far away down. So that's a tip if you are short as well and you need a little help bending over and, and whatnot. If you do pick up your baby and they start flailing at this age, if they start flailing, then it's gonna be harder to calm down. It also might help if you just lay them down and then kind of put your weight on them, not like your full weight, but, but put their arms to their side and let them know you're physically there. That will help them to stop flailing so that they are able to calm down. And the shush pat is certainly a no at this age. It's going to be way too stimulating. Once you get them to a point where they are falling asleep on their own, then you might need to step back away from their crib. You don't ever leave the room until you know your baby is 100% asleep. But your presence might be a distraction at this point, so just keep that in mind. I did not do pick up put down at this age. After I would do pick up put down, we got into a point where I would just kind of sit next to my daughter's crib, but even by five months, my presence was clearly a distraction. I definitely got to a point where by six months, I would have to put her down and immediately leave the room, which is what every parent dreams of doing, <laughs> but I could not be in that room for a second longer. She would just have a very difficult time falling asleep if I did. Now we'll get to eight to 12 months. This is when it's really adapted, pick up, put down is to your child's age. Keep in mind that your child will probably be dropping the cat nap somewhere between eight and nine months, which means that they're going to need to go to bed at an earlier time. A lot of parents make the mistake at this age of letting their baby stay up a little later, especially if they are crawling or walking or pulling up and they seem to be having a good time playing. It might be tempting to put them to bed later, but we just need to make sure that they go to bed earlier. Around the time my daughter dropped her cat nap, I had to push her bedtime forward by 30 minutes to 7 p.m. And it never seemed like she was tired. It still doesn't seem like she's tired when I put her down, but she's asleep within like five to 10 minutes tops. So I know that it's the perfect bedtime for her. So at eight to 12 months, your baby is way more likely to settle out of your arms than in them. And they may be pulling up and standing in their crib when they're in distress. So when you do pick up put down, you're going to wait for them to pull up and stand. If they do not pull up, they may at least sit up. So you'll at least wait for that. My daughter did not pull up on her in her crib, I think till she was closer to a year. And she could definitely do it by 10 months. But I just thought that was interesting. She was fully sleep trained by this point. But I don't want you to be discouraged if you might have a 10 or 11 month old who's not standing sitting is good enough or at least moving in a way that acknowledges your presence but essentially at this age because they're so physically capable you want them to do that pick up for you so them standing up or sitting up is the pickup of pick up put down so essentially just what you're doing is the put down what you do is you grab let's say your baby's standing you grab them around the waist and the knees and you lay them back down in their crib and you try to lay them facing away from you so that they cannot see you. Once you lay them down, you can put your hand on their back so that they know that you're still there. And then if they are crying and they get up again, you just keep putting them down and doing the same thing over and over. If your baby is extremely upset, more so than you've ever seen, and you would say it's emotional distress or even possibly some fear of abandonment that might be coming in at this point, it is okay to pick them up to comfort them a little bit. But if that just angers them even more, you may have a breach of trust issue. A lot of times Tracy Hogg would suggest sleeping in your child's room at this age if they are terrified of their crib or of their room or of being alone. So if you've tried controlled crying and you've left your baby for Maybe you've just tried it for one or two nights, but you gave up on that. They may be afraid of when you leave. So every effort you do will be fruitless unless you stay. So you might even need to consider staying the night with your child after you do pick up put down. That might only happen at maximum for three nights in a row. 
before your child is more comfortable sleeping on their own. And I think using your voice at this age is probably a lot more helpful. Your baby is more likely to understand you, to understand your tone of voice at this age, but it also could really stimulate them and get them to try to talk back. So you just need to know your child and you need to be careful and, and know what's best for them. Also at this age, this is great. They usually really love to have a security blanket or a stuffed animal or just something that they can sleep with. That is really helpful. So if they do have an item like that or if you wanna give them an item like that, when you do the put down, you can hand them that item to help comfort them while they're in the crib. We gave my daughter a lovey, I think when she was 11 months old, maybe a little before 11 months. And she sleeps with it all the time. She loves it. She actually sucks on it. That's the way she self-soothes. But she'd suck on her clothes before or her swaddle. That was something she developed with sleep training. It's just her way of soothing herself. She still doesn't really suck her thumb. She's just figuring out alternatives to that. But that really helps her to know. It actually cues to her that it's bedtime and it helps her to know that she is in a good, safe place. Additionally, around eight to 12 months, you may experience a problem of getting your child to sleep and then when you leave the room, they're more upset. And if, it, it could be a separation anxiety issue or a trust issue, but there's something called the chair method that I've seen online. And Tracy just doesn't really name this method, but she says essentially the same thing, where the first night you do pick up, put down, you need to stand next to your crib so your child can see you or at least be aware that you're there if seeing you is too much and you need to wait until they actually fall asleep before you can leave then the second night you just inch closer to the door and by the third night inch even closer and then hopefully after three or four days you can just be out of the room and they'll be comfortable on their own there's a couple things in the back of this chapter that i wanted to read for this video the first is that we're gonna go through 12 reasons that pick up, put down does not work. Tracy just has this all listed out here in the chapter. I'm just gonna read them out loud and talk about them. So number one, parents try pick up, put down when their baby is too young. This is something I've stressed a lot. You really don't wanna try this too early. If you try it too early and then you have to wait to try it later, it's going to be a lot harder. Babies that are younger than three months cannot handle the constant crying. They cannot handle the picking up and the putting down. It's just too much for them and it's exhausting and traumatizing. Don't do it. Number two is that parents don't understand why they're doing pick up, put down, so then they're doing it wrong. The shush pat technique is for calming your baby, but pick up, put down is for teaching them self soothing and sleep skills. Tracy says here that she never suggests starting off with pick up, put down, that you should start off with the 4S ritual. That includes the shush pat instead of pick up, put down especially if your child is younger than six months. If they're older, then just do pick up, put down. But essentially, if you don't understand that pick up, put down is just a sleep technique tool and that shush pat is a soothing tool for when your baby can't soothe themselves, then you might do it wrong. You may hold your baby for too long while you're doing pick up, put down. You may just have some small errors like that that don't contribute well to you actually being effective in pick up, put down. So I would say it's important to read this chapter over and over. I probably read this chapter front to back like three times before I actually sleep trained my daughter. I just wanted to make sure I was gonna do it right. So just really make sure you're gonna do it right. Don't just hear about it vaguely. Don't just watch this video and then do it. Read the book, get more in depth. Number three, parents don't realize that they have to look at and adjust their baby's entire day. So remember, it's super important that you get your baby on that four month easy routine before you actually start this. That is the age appropriate routine for them at four months. So it's what you need to be teaching them to adhere to. But also take a look at the things that you're doing throughout the day. Since you're now following this routine at four months, make sure you're not going out too much. Make sure you're not doing overstimulating activities that exhaust them even more. Number four, parents have not focused on their baby's cues and cries or how to watch their body language. So remember, you need to tailor this to your child. This is why I did the shush pat quite a bit with my daughter with pick up, put down. This is why I would hold her horizontally. This is why I would sit next to her in her crib after, I think that was about a week or two after I did pick up, put down for the very first time. I wasn't doing pick up, put down anymore. I was just sitting there doing nothing just 
to be there and I knew that that was helpful for her at the time and then one day I just knew it wasn't helpful anymore and that's not because I was reading that in this book it's not because I was following a certain timeline it's because I knew my daughter and I knew what she needed so make sure you're watching your child that you know what they are asking for what they need help with you know what their cues are and you know their cry so the whole bit about the mantra cry you really need to know if it's a genuine cry or not before you start doing pick up put down number five Parents might not realize that as a baby develops, you have to adopt pick up put down to make it appropriate. So we went through all of the age groups. You need to do whichever one works for your baby. If you are doing shush pat with a baby older than six months, then you're not gonna be doing it right. And if you're physically picking up a 12 month old and shush patting them or, or comforting them and then laying them down, you're going to have a harder time. Number six, parents own emotions can get in the way, especially guilt. I would say guilt is a huge thing with controlled crying. I picked pick up put down because I didn't think I would have any guilt involved. And honestly, I didn't feel guilty in any way for doing pick up put down with my daughter. I knew that she was not in distress while I was in the room with her. But if you do have a hard time with your child's cry in general, even if it's not a real serious genuine cry for help, then just be aware that you may feel guilty for putting them through an ordeal like this. Tracy Hogg mentioned something she calls poor baby syndrome where you just feel like your baby is always in distress and you baby them basically beyond what they actually need. So just be aware if you do suffer from that, that that might come into play during sleep training, that you might really struggle with being firm and strict with your child, but also being loving and caring. If your guilt gets in the way too much, then you're gonna have a hard time assessing your child's cues and caring for them the way they need to be cared for. Number seven, the room is not ready for sleep. You really have to minimize distractions. It does not really work in broad daylight. You don't wanna have bright glaring lights. You don't wanna have a stereo blaring in the background. If there's other kids in the house, you might even need to get a friend to come over to watch them and keep them away from the room. You really don't want any distraction at all. I got blackout curtains. I had string lights that I would hang that weren't too bright, but that allowed me to watch my daughter properly. If you need a white noise machine, you can use that. I did not do white noise when I did sleep training because I did not want my daughter to use white noise as a prop. But if that's something that helps your baby or helps block out neighbors or a noisy street or anything like that, then definitely use that. Number eight, parents don't take their child's temperament into consideration. Pick up put down will work differently for every single baby because they're all individuals, but you really wanna consider the temperament they have. An angel or textbook type of baby will be easier to put to sleep than a grumpy baby who might be more aggressive and then a spirited and touchy baby may just be more aware of their surroundings and will be distracted more easily. Tracy even says that certain smells coming in from the kitchen could distract your baby enough to make it difficult to fall asleep. The method itself is basically the same, but you just want to adapt it to your child and how you know that they will react. We're assuming that by four months, you have a pretty good idea of who your baby is and what they like and don't like. Number nine is one parent isn't ready. This is really a technique you need to do with more than one person. If you're a single parent, then you want to enlist a friend or a grandparent or one of your own parents or a sibling or someone that can help you. But if both parents are not ready to do this if mom is okay with the way her baby is sleeping and dad is not and he wants to change it and do pick up put down then it's not going to work you need to be on the same page if you have a caregiver or a babysitter or a nanny or something like that that might have to do pick up put down as well then you need to make sure that they're on the same page with you and that they fully understand everything number 10 parents might not coordinate their efforts so for example if you start doing pick up put down and after 40 minutes you are tired and frustrated so your husband comes in and he decides to do it the rest of the time essentially what you might not realize is that your husband coming in is actually more distracting to your child and it's going to take them longer to go to sleep now. You're basically starting over when a new person comes in and starts. What Tracy suggests is that you have a set plan for tag teaming the sleep training. So only do it for two nights at a time. If you're doing this every night by yourself for every nap, for everything, and your husband doesn't do it at all, then you're gonna burn out really fast. So if you only do two nights at a time, 
and your husband does two nights or if during the weekend he can help with naps or you have caregivers helping with naps then you will have a much easier time you'll be less frustrated and your baby will get used to other people putting them to sleep who regularly do put them to sleep my husband and i definitely switched off doing this every two nights but my daughter would only be put to sleep during naps by me since my husband was at work during the day so she definitely <clears throat> reacted differently to me doing it versus my husband doing it and my husband would actually get way more easily frustrated i was <laughs> so much more committed to following through with it but we talked about this before and we came up with a plan and that really helped us and it helped my daughter get used to her dad putting her down. Number 11 is that parents might actually have unrealistic expectations. So if we're expecting pick up put down to work right away or we're expecting it to work within a certain amount of time, then we're going to become more easily frustrated. And if you're counting the amount of times it takes to pick up and put down and you hit a certain number like 100 and you might think, no, this shouldn't be possible. This just isn't working because I can't pick them up 100 times and have it be working then you may be more likely to give up. But in reality, if the habits your child has are very deeply entrenched, it's going to take a lot longer to get those out. There were definitely nights where we got pretty up there in the number of times we picked her up and put her down. Additionally, if you're using pick up put down to extend your child's naps, you might expect a change more immediately, but you probably won't get one. If your baby is been used to for many months taking just a 45 minute nap, it's going to be really hard for them to take anything longer than a 45 minute nap. So even if you're just seeing a little progress, like the next day it's a 55 minute nap or a 60 minute nap, you need to keep going and keep trying so that they can get used to sleeping for two hours. Number 12 is that parents can get easily discouraged and don't stick with it. So especially if you do have an unrealistic expectation or something goes wrong or it's a lot harder than you thought it was you might be tempted to quit but that's actually worse because if you just spent all that time putting your baby through the whole pick up put down process and you quit and you give up and you go back to your old props then that's just sad for your baby that they went through all of that learning and now they actually might even be more confused because they don't know what that was you were just doing if you just abandoned it and went back to the old thing. If you don't commit for a long amount of time as well, you're not gonna see change. If you only try for one night or you can't even go past doing it for 20 minutes, don't give up. It can take a lot longer, but the hardest time that you're gonna do it is the first time. It will get easier. It, it will not be always like uphill progress it might be a little rocky but there will be an upward trend and that's what you have to track so we kept really meticulous methods of how long it took like the start time of putting her down the end time of when we actually left the room i tried to count during it how many times i picked her up and i left notes as to like if she started to settle and then maybe got wor more worked up things like that so i was actually able i think i took notes like that for a couple of weeks and i was able to see a very significant upward trend but in the first week or so it looked like it was all over the place we would have some days some naps where she might have seemed to regress a little bit and it was taking longer or taking more pickups and then all of a sudden the next one it would just be like i just laid her down and she fell asleep and then the next nap after that it would be totally different so you just need to see that you're making some progress and so i would suggest tracking it we just had a clipboard with a piece of paper outside of her room that i immediately i'd leave the room and write down on it or if i was going in i'd write down the end time i would never have my phone in the room so i would always leave it out and i had a clock in her room so i could see the time as well but if it's hard for you to have a clock because you're just counting the minutes then don't do that all right so those are her 12 reasons for why it might not work so if you have experienced pick up or down if you've tried it on your own and it hasn't worked i would recommend looking at these reasons and figuring out what your problem might be. She definitely goes more in depth on them with more practical advice. But really quickly before we end, there's just some quick survival strategies that I wanna give you as an encouragement. Number one, think your plan through before you start and don't do it alone. So come up with the other person that's going to help you, what days and nights they're going to help you with. If anybody can help you for naps, just think that through and think it through for a few weeks. 
there's no exact number in here of how long she says you have to do this for in weeks. It took my daughter, I think after the second week, we never picked her up again, but it took her until a little closer to five months. So like after doing it for about four weeks to where she would just fall asleep on her own and we would leave immediately. But it was just like a very slow progression. And it's gonna be different with every single baby, but you're gonna see the most progress within the first week for sure. She recommends actually that you start pick up, put down on a Friday night or on a Friday day during the naps, just and then you have the weekend so you're not too tired. I don't work, my husband does, so we actually started on a Wednesday. So I took Wednesday night, Thursday night, and then he was able to take Friday night, Saturday night. And by that Monday, it was just completely different. And also, I just wanna say, I am saying, you know, it, it took time about four weeks before my daughter could just go to sleep on her own and be fine. But the only night that she ever woke up in the middle of the night was the first night. After that night, she slept through the night without any wakings at all. The, the trouble she really just had was with was the initial falling asleep of not wanting to be alone. And that, to me, is completely reasonable. I'll spend 30 minutes sitting next to her crib if I can get eight hours of sleep at night, uninterrupted. So just as an encouragement, I just wanted to clarify that. It also might help if you use earplugs when you're in the room with your baby. If they're crying really bothers you, then definitely I highly recommend. I did not know if my daughter's crying would bother me or not, so I just kept earplugs on me, but I, I actually never used them. It actually helped me to hear her cry more clearly, so I knew where she was in the process of falling asleep. And also don't feel sorry for your child. You're doing pick up, put down. It is an amazing tool. You're not leaving them to cry by themselves. You're not leaving them for controlled crying. You're trying to teach her this amazing thing of being an independent sleeper with a healthy sleep habit. The result is going to be that, that they sleep better and longer and that they're more well rested. And that is an amazing gift. So it is a lot of work. It's like your coach and you're training your child. And so you're gonna see that, you know, obviously it might be easier if you just pick them up and start rocking them, but it's going to be harder in the long run if you do that. So don't feel bad for them. Be happy, be encouraged, and be confident when you're in there. They can definitely pick up on if you feel bad or not. And lastly, the survival strategy she gives is if you're tempted to quit, ask yourself, what will the situation be if I cave in? And it's usually gonna be worse. You're gonna go back to your old prop. You're gonna go back to not sleeping. I thought about that all the time. <laughs> if I just gave her her pacifier, that was the hard thing I had trouble with because I took away her pacifier when we first started and I knew she wanted it the first night. Like I could tell she was asking for it. And I tried to wean her off of it a little bit before, but I basically had to go cold turkey with it the very first night I did pick up put down. And I really wanted to give in, but I knew that the situation would just be worse and that every second that I spent in there doing pick up put down would have been completely fruitless if I just gave her her pacifier. What I actually did was I took all her pacifiers out of the room before I started and I gave them to my husband. I said, do not let me give this to my daughter. So he, we just had two pacifiers and he just had them both with him so that I could not you know, hide one and get it from him or, or use it without him knowing. And if I used it, I was admitting to failing the method and I knew I wouldn't sleep through the night and that she wouldn't sleep through the night either. So just consider what the situation will be if you give in. And this is also what helped me is the next chapter. Looking at that, that's gonna be chapter seven. That'll be our next video. So chapter seven is called, we're still not getting enough, enough sleep. And this is sleep problems after the first year. So if I'm gonna be honest, I read this chapter before I sleep trained and it really encouraged me to sleep train. Mostly because I think we have this mentality of like, oh, of course babies don't sleep. We shouldn't expect them to. And then when our child turns one, we just are like, if they, they're not sleeping, we're just shocked that they're not sleeping. So we're like, wait a second, shouldn't they be able to sleep? They're one and they can't sleep on their own. And so getting to that chapter and reading that really helped me because I was like, I don't want to be in that situation because it'll just be harder to undo everything from the last year. So if you're looking for some encouragement or a, a push to what your future might be if you wait too long, it's not bleak, I promise. We'll talk about this in the next video. There is a way you can sleep train babies older than one year, but it's a lot harder for both of you because you're used to doing other things. And so it's difficult to, 
to introduce a new technique and a new tool into teaching sleep. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns. Also, please subscribe so you can be notified when more videos come out. We're gonna be finishing this book. I'm gonna do a video on every single chapter. And then after that, I'm gonna do a lot shorter videos. I know these are really long. I'm gonna do shorter videos that answer more specific questions that you might be having. If you want to stay tuned, then subscribe to those. Thanks for watching.